Hi guys and welcome back to the Player YouTube channel and today we're going to be taking a look at a car from Alfa Romeo and it is one of the best in its class. This is none other than the Stelvio Quadrifoglio. Let's take a look around this beast and see whether it's value for money. The one thing you've got to admire about this particular Stelvio is the way the styling's been done for the Quadrifoglio. And you get these lovely vents on the bonnet here, and at the same time, the low cut splitter down the bottom. I mean, all the cars benefit from these lovely LED lights anyway, and the very traditional grille that's at the front here with the Alfa Romeo badge. And obviously the offset number plate, which I think really does make an Alfa stand out. So when you see it coming down the road, you know it's an Alfa. Price-wise, well, a standard Stelvio can start from around £27,000, and that's for a 2.2-litre diesel engine. Obviously, this being the bigger and the Quadrifoglio engine is going to cost a bit more, to the value of around £75,000. And you're going to start adding a lot of extras to that as well. One of the first things that are extra are the ceramic brakes that you see on this particular model, and they're quite a few grand extra as well. Inside here, if you want your calipers painted red, you will pay an extra £250. If you want them in yellow, however, you can have them for £150. Search me. <laughs> Answers on a postcard or comment on that one. I'd love to know your reasoning why. 20-inch uh, rims, which I think look absolutely fabulous, and they, they have on them a specially developed Pirelli P0 Corsa tyre which is superb in the wet and even better in the dry because this thing is chucking out a lot of power it needs to stay on the road. As you work your way down the side of the car on every quadrifoglio you will always have the triangle with the four leaves of the green clover that's on the side there. And there is a little bit of history here and I'll run for it very quickly. Enzo Ferrari and a guy called Luciano Savocci got together and decided to start Alfa Romeo racing. Unfortunately Savocci wasn't that good when it came to qualifying. He hardly ever made it into the top three. So one day he came in and he'd cut out a piece of cardboard from a cereal packet and on the back was a four leaf clover. He went and stuck it inside underneath the windscreen and that day not only did he put it on pole position but they also managed to win the race. They were later joined by another two racing drivers another guy called Ascari and another guy called Fumari and we mustn't forget any of these guys because they were all so important in the actual development what we see today as the quadrifoglio and quadrifoglio in Italian means four leaves quadrifoglio simply put I'm loving this car not only has it got history it's beautiful looking it's fabulous to drive but is it an everyday use car or is this something you just keep in the garage for fair weather driving? Let's carry on and check it out. Under the bonnet, well, you get a 2.9 litre 503 brake horsepower engine. 
A lot of the rumours about this engine are that it probably came out of a California in the, uh, the old V8 shape and they cut two cylinders off to make this, the V6 twin turbo that it is. And you can see these twin turbos right at the front here. It's quite neatly packaged, however you do get a lot of plastic on the top. I mean this is like a Power Ranger outfit, it's ridiculous, you could whip that off and go to a fancy dress party with it. It also comes with this torsion bar across here and I bet you don't get that on the 2.2 standard diesel engine because this is a big powerhouse and it's going to be pulling this car left and right all over the place. Let's go around the back and check out what that's got to offer. So around at the back of the Stelvio, well, the good looks just continue. It's just such a lovely, well put together car. It's beautifully designed. I actually met the designer in Geneva. So if you click up here now, you can see that video as well, because it's all about the new Tonali that they're launching next year. Well worth a watch that one, quite interesting. Anyway, back to the uh, car in question. Stelvio comes with quite a low, it's sort of almost a uh, Range Rover Evoki type rear screen here but it doesn't distract from the view from the from the front through the mirror it's quite a good viewing position from the front um, you get this diffuser over the back and inbuilt in there is a nice big brake light so the safety aspect is still there as well you get a wash wipe um, and you get the Q4 which obviously quadrifolio four-wheel drive all-wheel drive LED lights as standard you'd expect that anyway and then the lovely massive double exhaust tailpipes either side that dictates something when you come up behind a car like this if you could keep up with it because 0 to 60 on this car is sub three and a half seconds it's absolutely crazy and with a limited top speed of around about 190 miles an hour I haven't put it through its paces like that and yeah I'd like to see this do that actually It'd be quite interesting um, assisted electronic tail lift as you would expect and before we jump in the boot, the other thing which I want to show you, under here is a lovely diffuser. It's very Ferrari-esque, as I like. I like that word as well. In the back here, 560 litres. This is a proper family car. So not only you've got the power and the speed and all that, you do have the versatility to be able to put a lot of gear in here. Underneath, well, you would expect, unfortunately, not here, a spare wheel. And I think it's an option, so you can have this taken out because there's plenty of room in there. But these stupid pump-up kits, I think they're a complete waste of time, to be honest with you. Um, it does come with a 12-volt adapter over there. It's got two shopping bag holders. And then the best bit of all, if you flick the button there, it means you can push the seats down from the back. So both seats go down, just like that. How perfect is that? And then basically the centerpiece also drops, but we'll do that when we jump in the back and I'll show you what it's like for the passengers. Um, there's plenty of space. That's now almost 1,600 litres, which is humongous. The one thing my pet hate, as you guys all know, is the parcel shelf. And it's always a pain to get in and out. But with this one, it's not. And it weighs nothing because it's a nice little blind situation. It's very easy to use. Unfortunately, nowhere to put the damn thing, as usual. The only place I can think which would work it's possibly over there but then it's still going to be in the way that's a shame because it was going so well up until then look let's jump in the back let's see whether it's comfortable let's see if it actually does work for some passengers in here because at the end of the day that's what this car is about it's supposed to be a family car but at the same time you can take on the likes of ferraris maseratis and lamborghinis so let's check out in the back what the passengers can expect. Well, the first thing you're going to notice with this is you get a nice wide aperture here. So it's very easy to get in and out of the car. Now, Italian people, they're big family people. So they're obviously thinking that maybe, you know, grandmother, you're putting the baby in. It's all been thought out. So you get this lovely sort of entry here. Another thing that's been well thought out is another lever here for pulling the seat down. Look at that. So if you do have to get spare nappies or you've got to grab the dog out of there, whatever, you can do it from here as well as in the back, which I showed you when we were around in the boot. The seats themselves, well, beautiful leather, Alcantara lined here in the middle as well, really lovely and soft. The Isofix points come with the little covers on them as well. So that means when the kids have grown up and you've still got this car, you haven't lost the little covers and you haven't got these horrible gaping big holes where the Isofix points go. There's plenty of room here to put water bottles. Let's jump in and see how much leg room we've got. Well, masses, as you can see. I haven't moved the seats forward in any way. There's plenty of height in the ceiling as well because of this big panoramic roof, which gives you a bit more lift as well. Um, 
the seats here, these aren't standard. These are the carbon fiber uh, racing seats. They're an extra 3,000 quid worth every single penny, but we'll talk about that when I jump in the front. You do have independent heating controls at the back here, but all you can do is turn them off and on. You can't adjust the temperature. There are two USB points at the bottom there, and then there's a stupid little cubby hole thing, which God knows what that's for. It's just a waste of space, if you ask me. Transmission tunnel's not too high, so when you do slide across, it's very easy. It's comfortable, but I wouldn't want to go more than 50 miles in this, not sitting here right in the middle, even though you do get a good view right out over the front there and it just feels rather spacious but look where my elbows are i don't think anybody well i suppose italian people are a little bit smaller than us brits so maybe you could easily get three in the back and they again they're quite cozy in the back here as well they're very romantic um i'm loving this car it's lovely and comfy it's got plenty of room and you could just sit here and enjoy yourself for a couple of hours in the center here double cup holder and a nice armrest no ski thing in here unfortunately but there again would you really want to take this car skiing hmm but then if you're Italian you can't ski anyway so ha ha comment on that one if you dare let's get in the front let's see what Alpha have put in as far as tech and let's get it out on the road and see what it does to the gallon the economy of this car is it economical let's hold there here we are up front and the driving position is it's pretty good. I'm not going to say it's stunning because I always say that. It's, it's good. Another thing I do like about this car is these lovely paddles here, the, uh, the old gear paddles. They're really, really nice. And the steering wheel itself is exactly the same steering wheel as in the Julia Quadrifoglio. Uh, I just love the whole thing and it's very reminiscent of the Ferrari with the stop start button there. Anyway, let's talk about the practicality. We're going to start the car up. It's keyless ignition, as you would expect. So foot on the brake and push the start button as you would a Ferrari. I'm going to put the key over here on the seat because sadly no one's thought of anywhere to put this like in some other cars that we've had where we just popped it in the front it had its own little space let's start on the steering wheel to the right well we have the volume control for your media we have the telephone control and we have the voice recognition control here on the left well that's pretty simple again it's, it's very easy this you've got the um, uh, um, cruise control <laughs> <laughs> brain went dead sorry brain went dead just for a second it was like um 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 and i could hear you all going cruise control you bloody idiot anyway yeah it's cruise control so you can reset that and you can change the distance between you and the car in front etc um i do keep going on about the steering wheel but it's so nice because it's got the carbon fiber insert there you get the leather around here and then on the top here you've got the alcantara it's just beautifully done but one thing i hate about this car listen to this it just sounds like a 1960s Wolseley, like something from... It's horrible. It needs to be something Italian. Beep. You know, something that you go, that would just be like, oh, did someone hoot me? You know, it's just, it's horrible. Change it. Get, get rid of it. <laughs> you get a nice eight-speed gearbox, um, fully auto. They do do in left-hand drive only, a manual gearbox. But according to what all the other reviewers have said, don't go there, stick with the auto box. You can stick it in on the paddles anyway. Simple controls here, indicator, lights, and then on the right here, you've got your wipers and the controls and the rear. And on the rear, you just tap down once and that works. Really nice, simple display. It's not as digital as I would have imagined, but it's there and it does its job. You have a little button on the end of the mister there that you can just scroll through the different things. There's only three or four anyway. It just gives you your mileage readout and you can have the speedo showing up there as well. Media system, very basic, really nice. It works. You can pair your phone up with it. It doesn't have Apple Play. It doesn't have all those bits and pieces. I think it's fine. It's got a DAB radio that works really well. Heating controls, a little bit awkward sometimes because you can't really read or see what they're doing until you start to play around with them. But I'm not, I'm, you know, it's not the end of the world. In here, well, it's a cubby hole, but it's not massive. You've got a couple of USBs and you've got an aux in as well. And then down here, there is somewhere a little box, a little thing, a little 12 volt inside there, which is quite handy as well. Um, you have the big knurled wheel here, which you can use to scroll around. You have the menu button there, and then you have the option buttons there. So everything comes up on screen. It's not touchscreen. That's the only thing. 
I love the finish on the car, really nice stitching, loads of leather, you'd expect this for 75 grand. Then you've got all this lovely carbon fibre around here as well. The actual seating controls themselves, well, it's not that, you know, these ones are the three grand extra option, which I mentioned when I was in the back. They are very comfortable, but they're pretty limited. They just go up and down. If you want them to go backwards and forwards, you have to do it manually. Likewise down here, it's all manual. But there again, it saves the weight of the car, doesn't it? So the only other thing, double cup holder there. That's about it. There's a 12 volt adapter there, and there's another USB there. It's all here and it's all geared up really as a great family car. But what does it do to the gallon? Well, let's get out on the road and let's find out. Here we are out in the Stelvio Quadrifoglio. Oh my god, what a stunning car! I mean, it just well, I've almost lost the words, and that's incredible for me, as you probably know. If you're a regular viewer of the player, you will know I rarely get lost for words. This car has taken me to that limit. The, I was expecting the, the car to be very top heavy. It's about 200 kilos more than the Julia, as you would expect. It, it weighs in around uh, 1,800 and something kilos, which is just short of the two ton. Um, and I was thinking because it's much higher and it's got a bit more weight to it, it'll have a lot more body roll, it, you know, a bit top heavy maybe. Oh no. What I didn't realize when I'd done a little bit of research on this car, the chassis was developed by the one of the Ferrari engineers who developed the 458 Speciale, um, and it is just simply second to none. In the way it's been set up, you can feel it. It's, it's almost a race car in SUV clothing. That's the only way I can describe it. Um, the car itself, well, comes with four different modes. Um, it comes with an advanced economy mode. Yes, I almost laughed when I looked at that. Um, I'm getting 16 and a half miles to the gallon combined. Alpha say 32. I don't think so. It could be a little bit of a stretch, that one. Um, I've done some good mileage in it. I've done some, you know, and I've been in the advanced economy as well. Mm, I don't think so somehow. Um, next mode up, normal, normally. This it's just the normal day-to-day -day usage mode, which works fine. Oh, I forgot to mention, the A mode shuts down half the engine, so you only use three cylinders. Almost blew that, needed to tell you that. However, it, it doesn't work anyway. I mean, it obviously does shut half the engine now, but it's not giving you any more miles to the gallon. So to be honest, I've kept it in normal. So normal, let's get back to normal. Normal mode is as it sounds. It's got normal suspension. It's got the normal engine sound. Steering's quite nice. I mean, the whole setup of the car is beautifully. It's balanced. It's very poised. Um, and then we start getting a bit of fun. Then we get to dynamical, which is the D. Dynamico is uh, Alpha's way of saying sport mode, sport. So Dynamico is lovely. It gives a little bit more noise from the exhaust, a little bit of baffle comes open, so you start to hear that lovely 2.9 litre twin turbo, 503 brake horsepower. How many times do I need to remind you guys, this has an amazing engine, you wanna hear it. So in the Dynamico mode, you do get a little bit more throttle response as well. And the suspension tightens up and the steering tightens up a little bit as well. It gets a bit heavy, you feel it. It's a little bit more responsive as well. It's not as lollopy. I love that word, lollopy. Um, I made it up probably, it sounds good though. The next mode is every little boy's dream. That is the mode when you turn it and you have to hold it as well because it really, I'm gonna do it now and I'm holding it over. Now it goes into race mode. And well, 
if you put this, I've now put it into manual and I'm gonna use the paddles. <laughs> We're in an SUV, guys. I mean, where the, listen. Oh my God, this is just absolutely mad. This is a family car. And the minute you put it in that race mode, okay. There are a couple of little things you need to know. When you put it in race mode, sorry if it's got a bit dark, I've just gone sort of down through a real dippy thing. When you put it in race mode, God, I'm so excited. You shut off everything, the stability control, the traction control, everything is all off. It's you and the car. So really you don't wanna be doing this when you're on the school run, or you've got the dogs in the back, or you're going shopping down at you know your local supermarket because your wife are probably, or the girlfriend, you know, not gonna be happy. However, I would suggest you did put it in that when you're picking up the mother-in-law. It's a great mode to be in, it's mother-in-law mode. Um, I'll let you work that one out for yourselves. Race mode, amazing. Um, let's just drop down. Oh. <laughs> Shut up, you stupid car. Oh my God. It's like falling in love with an Italian. That'd be scary. Um, it, it, yeah, it's just out of the out of the box. This car, completely. Out of the box. That's the the manual side of the gearbox, as you saw, using the paddles. Um, it's an eight-speed auto gearbox. Sorry, I'm just coming back down to earth now. Just coming, calming back down again. Eight-speed auto gearbox, as I said. There is an option as long as you want left-hand drive to have a manual gearbox. Why? I have no idea why you would want a manual gearbox or a left-hand drive, to be honest. I love the right-hand drive. Left-hand drive, yeah, no, 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 I could do that, but not in the UK, that'd just be stupid. That's, that's an accident waiting to happen. Tons, speaking of accidents, tons of safety equipment on this. You've got blind spot mirrors. Um, there's the autonomous braking and stuff like that. There's, you know, it's, it, this car really is quite sensitive. It, it, it sort of knows, it almost reads you. It's, it's the car's got like ESP. It's, you know, extra sensory car perception. Um, it's a cracking car. It's definitely a family car. We've seen that. We've taken a look around. We've got masses of space in the back. It's comfy for the passengers. But think about it this way, guys, and I am sort of talking towards the guys here a little bit. I'm not trying to try not to be male chauvinist. But if you're about to become a daddy, come on, think about it. There ain't much better car to get. If you're a petrol head and you're gonna have to be a daddy, this is the one because you are gonna get so much street cred from your kids when you go and pick them up in an Alfa Romeo Stelvio than you are if you go and pick them up with one of the, uh, I'm not gonna call them competition because I don't really think this car has any competition. It's a one-off. It's, it's on its own, it's there. Guys, I've said enough. I've made my case for the Stelvio. I love it. It's going in my garage no matter what happens when I can afford one. Thanks for watching. You've been watching me, AJ the player. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Don't forget, like, subscribe, and comment. Love your comments. Keep them coming. And subscriptions. Again, thumbs up. Give me a subscription. Love it. Love it. Love it. I'll catch you next week with another amazing car. Thanks for watching, guys. Safe motoring. Thank you.